here is what um, one website, how one website uh, referred to Shekinah. It says that she is a part of the Godhead that came to dwell in the ark and then in the temple. This could not be the male god, the god of the sky and of high places. So Shekinah, formerly known as Asherah, there we go, a goddess of earth and sea, came to dwell in the ark of the covenant and then in the temple. We see her as Asherah, the great Canaanite goddess worshipped early on in the Hebrew tribe. We see her as Shekinah, the feminine presence of the Godhead and great mother. That's like Mary worship, mother, the, the mother of God, queen of heaven. We see her as uh, Mary, the incarnation of the Shekinah, queen of heaven, and our mediatrix. We see her in the images of Sophia and Mary Magdalene. Stop right here. Because there is a move afoot in Roman Catholicism to actually go ahead and say from the, from the papal bull that Mary is the mediatrix, the co-redemptrix along with Christ. In other words, they're going to come out and teach. They're, they're practicing it now. They've been practicing it for a thousand years. But they're going to come out and say one of these days that nobody can be saved unless you go through Mary first, who then goes to Jesus, then you can have eternal life. It's coming, my friend. So here it is. Here it is. Catholic doctrine, right up on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And the Sistine Chapel, I think, is where they have all of their grand ceremonies and all this stuff. That's their doctrine, right there. God and his consort, Shekinah, his girlfriend, Asherah, Ishtar, all of these other names, that's her, that's who she is. We're, we're not, but wait, there's more, because we're not, we're not done yet, okay? We're not done yet. And so, and, and I, 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 I equate this, you, you remember, there's always a move afoot, and somebody sent me an email today and haven't answered it yet, but I want you to listen to this. There's always people out there who are trying to tell everybody that God is both male and female. That's not the God of this Bible. You will never, ever, 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 ever see God referred to as a woman in this Bible. He never is. Um, the God who is both male and female is Baphomet, the fusion of the sexes together, male and female together. That's who Baphomet is. And so in your gender neutral Bibles, the TNIV, remember the one we talked about here a few weeks ago with Rob Bell, who is so excited, he just his voice just, eh, he's so excited because the TNIV talks about a new humanity. A new breed. And no wonder, because the God of the TNIV is the gender neutral or the androgynous God who is both male and female. So in the TNIV, they took out all of the references to God being in the masculine. They took it out. They emasculated God, is what they did. Um, Anyway, I'm going to answer this guy's email a little bit later on. And the whole Da Vinci Code thing, uh, you remember, and Leonardo Da Vinci was another one of these guys that put his secret and mystic Gnostic ideas into his artwork. Here's Jesus at the Last Supper with Mary Magdalene. That's not John, that's Mary Magdalene. And uh, their, their body's sort of making this imagery of, a, of two triangles. Notice they're opposites. Um, Jesus has a red shirt on and a blue cloak. Mary Magdalene has a blue shirt and a red cloak. Um, and there's, I mean, there's all kinds of little deals here. They're both leaning away from each other, showing opposites, and yet they're joined together. This is referred to as the Hieros Gamos. Um, here is an image of um, Hermes Trismegistus, which means thrice majestic. One, two, three. One, two, third eye here. And we have the imagery of the sun and the moon. That represents male and female together. His hands, one hand up, one hand down. That is as above, so below. Uh, and then you have this fire that, boy, just looks an awful lot like an X chromosome. I mean, that's, that's what that looks like. But Hieros Gamos is sacred marriage. The, the sacred ritual of joining the male and the female together. So that's that imagery that's up on top of the Sistine Chapel with God around his, his girlfriend's Shekinah's body. And they have just copulated. Now they're going to give illumination. This was referenced, Genesis chapter 6. I want you to notice the wording here. 
um, that the sons of God, notice we have three words here, sons of God, saw the three more words, daughters of men. And so the imagery here you have of two triangles intersecting one another. That is the three words and the three words, sons of God, daughters of men, intersecting together in Hyros Gamos, the heavens joining with the earth. And that is what is going to bring man to a new creation, a new evolution. The TNIV talks about a new humanity. It is the creation... So up on the, the, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel is not a depiction of God giving life to Adam. We already see from the Bible that that's incorrect. This is God and his wife joining together to give, the, to have the creation of a new man, a new Adam, as it were. Mankind who was both God and and man at the same time. Daniel chapter 2. They, the fourth kingdom, shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. I mean, that's what that imagery is all about. Now, but wait, there's more.